In 2001, Ontario's Progressive Conservative government introduced legislation to allow the Crown to confiscate property that might one day be used in a crime, or that might have been purchased with the proceeds of a crime. Before the bill was made law, and before hearings were held to get public opinion on the bill, Freedom Party's Paul McKeever appeared on Rhonda London Live to discuss the legislation. He was preceded by an academic and a police officer. Welcome back to Rhonda London Live. Joining our conversation, lawyer Paul McKeever. He's a spokesperson for the Freedom Party of Ontario. Paul, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Rhonda. I know you're absolutely outraged. Over yes, this I'm not happy about this at legislation. All. That's correct. Uh, you know, it's one thing to say that uh, we need to protect uh, people's property and, and their person. And, and frankly, Freedom Party and myself mm -hmm. personally are 100% behind that. We think that's the appropriate role for government. In fact, the only appropriate role for government. But when you take centuries of, of law mm -hmm. that respect the proprietary rights of every individual, uh, and, those, and those rights, those uh, rights to say, if you want to take this guy's property, you have to give him compensation mm -hmm. at the same time, not later, but right away. Those rights evolved out of a morality, a morality that said that life is moral mm -hmm. and that we apply our reason to produce so that we can survive. We produce property to survive. And to take one's property is effectively to interfere with one's life, uh, to interfere with one's attempts not only to survive but to thrive. So to take one's property without compensating them is in fact immoral. And, and this bill purports to be you know, a good tool for, for police, but it is in fact a step into uh, or a step away from the, the respect we've always had for life and the pursuit of, uh, of, a, of, of happiness, frankly, if you want to talk about it that way, but the right to live, to thrive, and to survive. We already have seizure laws in this country. Yes, we do, uh, criminally, uh, at, at the criminal mm -hmm. federal level. Uh, this, if, my view on this law in particular is essentially what we're looking at is not a law that seeks to get at uh, the problem by seeking a different remedy, by simply seeking property. What we're looking at is an attempt to get at criminals by lowering the standard that's necessary to, to find them guilty of their they of their crime. They only have to be suspected. That, well, they have to, I mean, the police do have to bring an application or an mm -hmm. action, and then they can immediately bring a motion to have the property transferred to themselves, or to the Crown, rather. Um, and, the, and the thing about this is that the, um, I mean, there is the, there is the pretense of a, of a process going on, but it's nothing like uh, the, the same thing we'd see with the, you know, beyond mm -hmm. a reasonable doubt. Mm -hmm. It's just, is it more likely than not that this guy's a criminal? So you can imagine if you see a, a flake mm -hmm. of marijuana in a guy's Ferrari, maybe he uses this Ferrari to transport drugs mm -hmm. back and forth. If this woman has picked up a John, you know, mm -hmm. and this is the first time she's ever committed the crime of, of prostitution, uh, perhaps her whole house was bought with, with mm -hmm. proceeds of prostitution. So all of those things, uh, keep in mind, it's not just the property she has on her. It's any property that probably arose out of mm -hmm. a crime. Any, and even if only part of it, part of it, the uh, property arose out of the crime, the whole of the property gets to go to the state. Mm -hmm. This is an attempt to lower the standard, make it easy to grab stuff. And it's not entirely irrelevant that the property, once seized, can be uh, sold, liquidated, turned into cash, and returned to the police so they, c they can buy things like their helicopters, which mm -hmm. at present are not very popular mm -hmm. in Toronto, for example. So it is a revenue-generating revenue tool for the police, um, among other things. And it is an easy way to collect property without necessarily giving people the, uh, just the due process that they're entitled to. Phones are ringing. Let's go to Brenda on line 8. Go ahead, Brenda. You're on the air. Hi. Hi, I, Brenda. I just wanted to say that mm -hmm. I do support this legislation. Mm -hmm. um, I feel that um, there's a lot of fear-mongering mong mongering going on. Right. And that I don't think that the police would just, as you gave an example, someone complains about your dog, that mm -hmm. type of thing, and the next thing mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're saying that you're running a drug house and the police just mm -hmm. come in. I, I don't really believe that that's going to happen. I think that the police go through a lot of investigations before they wouldn't even initiate or decide whether or not this was part of organized crime. Mm -hmm. I think that the police aren't stupid. 
and I, I do not believe that they're stupid. And I, I believe that when, a, legis when a, a bill goes through and it be, becomes legal, that it can be enacted, it will be enacted, and, but if it's abused, it can be unenacted. Okay, Brenda, I want to thank you for your phone call. I don't think anybody is suggesting, certainly not me, that the, the police, you know, that police are stupid. No, far that from it. In fact, certainly not my intent. Or that, you know, that they're all corrupt and all they're looking at is, is to seize your property. But, no. however, um, to say that the, that the police are, are protecting society, that, that statement's only half correct. Really, it's the laws of the land that are supposed to be our, our, our protection. Well, that's right. And you have to look... And if I mean, you have a law that is so wide and so broad... Sure. I mean, you, you've asked the question, could this law lead to abuse? Mm -hmm. I think the first question is, is the law itself abusive? Mm -hmm. And I think it is. When the only standard required is, more likely than not, that this guy is dealing in, in mm -hmm. dope. Well, hold on a second. Right. Even if he's been acquitted of that, you can take his stuff, because that stuff probably... Uh, was purchased mm -hmm. with the proceeds of his mm -hmm. dope dealings. Well, who the heck knows that? And it's not fear-mongering to say that uh, Mike Harris is on the record as saying one of the great things about this legislation is that you can seize property without a criminal charge being laid. Right. Yeah, there's no need to, to lay a criminal charge. There's, and even if you have been charged, if you've been, mm -hmm. if you've been acquitted, or if the charge has been mm -hmm. dropped even, uh, they still can proceed. Now, the interesting thing is, how can you possibly, under this legislation, mm -hmm. conclude that money... Uh, ar arose from the occurrence of an, of an offense if you haven't first proved that the offense occurred. It's right. ridiculous. This law is attempting to do what is logically impossible, and that is to just presume that an offense occurred because otherwise we'd have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that an offense occurred. And then after presuming that the offense occurred on, on mm -hmm. a balance of probabilities, mm -hmm. then on a balance of pro probabilities, concluding that this cash must have come from the crime because this person does crime. Mm -hmm. I think we're, we're dealing with big, big leaps of faith here. And when you look at the immorality of taking a person's property, their means of, of thriving and surviving, I think we're not just, um, we're, not, we're not taking enough care when we say, well, we'll just add it to the toolbox. You don't just add to the toolbox something that so seriously interferes with, in some people's minds, God-given rights, but certainly rights that we all need to survive and to thrive. And don't we have the constitu constitutional right to due process? We certainly now, do. property rights are not entrenched in the Constitution. Jim Flaherty, Ontario's Attorney General, has already addressed that. Well, I might meet Jim in court in mm -hmm. a few weeks if he pushes this thing through. Uh, under, the, under Section 7, there's a life, liberty, and, and security of the person clause. In the courts, generally the term life has not uh, had much effect in determining whether or not a given law is, is uh, constitutional. But that's why I mention thriving and surviving. The right to life is a right to property. If you don't have a right to property, you have no ability to survive. Indeed. And I think that that is, would be found uh, to be the source of your protection of property were the case made in court. Okay, we have to take a commercial break, but don't go away. We'll be back with more Rhonda London Live right after this. Paul McKeever, we're almost out of time, but do you think that this law will withstand a constitutional challenge? I think there's a good possibility. History tells us that the, the uh, courts have uh, tolerated provinces who wish to punish criminal activity with proprietary remedies. So it's really up to the public to get out there and protest this bill. Hearings are on the 20th and 21st in Toronto. Okay, Paul McKeever, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. That is our show for today. Thanks for watching. I'll be back here again tomorrow at 2. Hope you'll join me. In the meantime, have a great day.